Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to our May assignment, Opposites Attract. Okay, so we were talking um, about this, and I, I wasn't going to share this, but I'll share it to everyone in the recording, that uh, that my wife actually came up with this assignment. Um, she's an art school person, Bauhaus trained. Um, she's She goes in deep, and she wrote this long description about Opposites Attract, and I was like, you got to cut that down. You can't can't say so much. You know, it's a it's uh, it's got to be the person has to interpret it their way. Uh, anyway, only eight people actually submitted, which is pretty crazy that only eight people submitted. So we're we're going to uh, we're going to see <coughs> what the uh, work is. Uh, forgive me, I just came back from some traveling, and I, I've got the travelers cold, so I may be a little bit nasal. Uh, I'm drinking out of my my photography since 1827 mug some ginger um so forgive me on that and uh, at the end of this i'd like to share with you some work that i did as i was scouting in uh, i went to paris did some street photography in paris got to hang out with peter turnley and uh, go to a cafe with him but then i jumped in a rental car and went out four hour drive to mont saint michel i want to show some work from mont saint michel because it was a really amazing place so uh our may challenge was opposites attract and uh let's see what we got okay our first entry comes from larissa falgarella and we've got fire and ice a song of fire and ice um i think it's well executed i, I like that i like the photograph um i like it quite a bit um now they're opposites and how they attract she's not here to defend her thesis on this one i don't quite see where the attract is i see a lot of <laughs> i see a lot of opposite of course you could say attract because the flame is close to the is very close to the the ice so we can we can go with that um maybe that's what she thought maybe she didn't she could always check this out and make a comment on the youtube when it's posted but this is uh this is larissa fungarella's uh opposites attract do uh do any of the johns you guys want to make a comment on this one I like the composition. I love the coloring. Uh, the colors are quite stunning. Um, yeah, I, I sort of agree with you on whether they attract or not. But overall, maybe it's a an optical attraction. The the red of the flame and the blue of the ice. Might have been can, what the thought was. Yeah, we can always fall back on the on the yeah. on the the way it's placed. It's. Uh, the flame looks like it's coming out of the ice. So, so that's uh all right. Um, thank you, Larissa. All right, now we're going to Charles Lede. Take a moment to absorb this one. I like this photograph, and I like the fact that it's an opposites attract because I'm looking through the photograph pretty deeply trying to figure out where like a classic opposite is and there's a mass of people and uh i i mean there's there's opposite people obviously there's definitely men women different races present um the signs but in so looking for the opposite trying to understand this photo as it as it works with the assignment I'm liking it more and more. There's more going on. There's it's actually it captures the frenetic nature. And if you stop on any particular face, it kind of it kind of works. The girl in the leather, the central figure, uh, the 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 guys, the Asian guys right above her. Um, the we got it looks like we got Henry Kissinger there in the far right. <laughs> um, and then the uh the disassociated uh New York woman moving forward. Yeah, it's uh that's Times Square. I think that the opposites attract. Like New York City, there's a lot of opposites and we're attracted together within the New York City. Um, it's unfortunate, but uh, but Charles is not here to defend his thesis or to add to it. So we're gonna we're gonna John, what do you think? I think the what gets me when you do opposites attract is the fact that both pedestrian flow zone keep moving signs are opposite in direction. That's what gets me. There you go. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Now that you say that, now I'm I'm seeing it. 
So everybody, everybody's moving one direction, the other direction, the, the signs are the attraction, shall we say. Right. Uh, it's, it, I like right. it. Yeah. It, it's, that, I like it a lot too. Yeah. It's a, it's uh you know, it's also good. The, uh, the lighting signs are all good. There's no like, uh, what do they call them? Uh, those, uh, the lines that sometimes the scan lines that go through, uh, digital billboards or, or, or TVs. There's none of that. It's all, it's nice and clear looking, good exposure. And it's black and white. Yeah, right it's excellent. Yeah, excellent exposure, I think. Yeah, definitely. Well, well done, Charles. All right. Now we are on George Boren. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> so these kind of come in. I mean, this one, I, I've been, again, George is in here, but I'm going to say that I, the opposites here are in terms of shape. So we've got the round shape versus the cross shape, um, repetitive forms. Um, it's, I, I hate to say this, but it's a good capture. I just don't like saying capture, even though I, I think we all know what I mean by that. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, that this, you know, it's executed very well. Um, the dome is cool with the, the decision to put that in the foreground to get the depth of field to stop everything the 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 contrails it's all it it's cool photograph straight up like it John what do you think um no I I, I, I hear some hesitancy. <laughs> No, I like it because uh, it's it's got real nice clarity. the The dome almost disappears as it, you lose. For me, I lose what size it is. Is it is it really a soccer ball? I mean, the way it, it's it's very uh, subtle in its own. I'm not sure if I can explain what I'm seeing. Yeah, I, I now that I, now that you say soccer ball, I, I hear you, but there. I'm gonna, you know, I've but got the a little square on the top of it, it definitely uh, says that it's not that. Yeah, the lights. It's got a. It's basically got a a, a building warning up on top of it. It could be a, <clears throat> could be a radar dish. Maybe it could be a, uh, uh, like a, uh, an indoor projection, uh, uh, like a solarium type thing. I'm, I'm not too, not too sure. But regardless, I, it it's a cool photograph. I, I I like it. I wouldn't mind seeing. The sky a little bluer, making it a little darker. Um, just to throw that out, I I think that would that would benefit from it. And there's one thing I was just I'm going to announce very shortly that we're going to have John Paul Campanegro on the on the show coming up the 21st of the month and talk about the print. And I was looking at his his notes and in his post processing, he was making the background darker. Uh, or the foreground darker to make accentuation. I think this could benefit from it, but cool photograph. Good job, George. All right, John, you are up. You're next. I, I got to say you were, I, wait, you shot this today? No, this one is this one. John, this isn't yours, is it? Okay. Am I still there? You're here. Okay. Yeah, no, I shot that yesterday. Ah, okay. Uh, okay, I thought it would have was... been better if I had done it today because we had more bees and creatures and things. When I thought about it, I thought about opposites attract and started thinking about the conflicts that have been going on with all the protests. I said, you know, it'd be interesting to have two opposed parties. That would be an opposite that attracts. But uh, then I started thinking, I said, well, what about in nature, opposites? And it sort of doesn't work. My bumblebee's going the wrong direction <laughs> of sorts. But it's, it's hard to train those guys to go the opposite. <laughs> get them in best time. <laughs> and then get them in flight, too. And it was a cold day yesterday, so there were just two bumblebees out doing their thing. I said, all right. Well, I know the flowers attract the bumblebees back and forth. I'm like, okay, we'll try that. Okay. I, I, and then I, yeah. 
I, I would when I was looking at this trying to figure it out, I, I kind of thought the flower or the bumblebee and, and that's the attraction. Um, I don't necessarily think they're so opposite, you know, both members of nature symbiotic relationship. Interesting though, when you said the uh the protest, I have a I have a photograph of uh of some protest and they're certainly opposites. Um yes. but, uh I didn't feel like I wanted to 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 go in that direction though. Because they attracted each other because they're opposites, but wanted to avoid it. So I like that she went into nature. But I'm gonna throw out to you, it, it you know, good job on 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 making your image and submitting it. You know, that's that's much respect for that. I, I always appreciate that. And especially with the sheer volume of people that didn't submit, you gain uh kudos on that. But you gotta spend more time with the with the bees and the you know, just keep invest an hour, an hour and a half until that that perfect shot comes because the perfect shot will come that being said i like the trail from the bee is that like is that there is that photoshop what's with the no is... none, of, none of this is photoshop it's out of the camera uh there were the picture the bee was actually a little more center screen and down that was some plants in the background uh, i had probably taken 18 of this picture Okay. Uh, 1840. Right. It was difficult because I would put in burst mode and shoot the bee when it's coming by, trying to get the focus. The and that's what I didn't like about it. It's like I I wanted to have the bee in clarity. And this one, right, it's right. like, well, the plant is close enough, but it just happened to be fortuitous that it was in the same direction as some plants in the background. Right, right, right. Now it works. It works. The softness and the the bouquet, it's, it's good. All right. I want to welcome Patrice and Jane to the to the show. Welcome. And uh, we're going to go on to our, our next one. And this is from Dr. Carr Kohenor. Again, for the newcomers, this is Opposites Attract. Um, I I really like this photograph. I, I think it's I think it's really cool. I think it's it's a cute. You know, you looked up, you got the contrails, the planes. And remember before when I was saying, I think that, that the other planes could have benefited from a darker, bluer sky? Well, yeah. here's a darker, bluer sky in, in practice, and it's contrast here. <laughs> Everything pops really nicely. So I, I, I like the photograph. However, in terms of opposites attract, you, the, I know the contrail, the plane, I don't, I, I don't, see an opposite really happening and i i can't even really extrapolate where the the opposite is so dr car conor I, I wish you were i wish you were here but you could always leave in the comments what you were thinking when you made this awesome photograph and uh john i'll turn it over to you what do you think i can see the opposites they're both coming from two different directions so i, I agree with you on the sky that i definitely like the the tone of the sky better Okay, yeah, good, good no, point. Good yeah. point on the opposites. Yeah, that that's I guess from opposite sides. That that's good. You know, it's an interesting assignment because it can be interpreted so many ways. Much like Martin Kiernan's submission, <laughs> looks like we have a a tableau going on. Um, I, I'm a sucker for skulls. I've I've got, I've got a lot of taxidermy in the house and skulls and. I'm a, I like I like skulls. I like skulls with fangs. It's a cool looking skull. It's got a flower over it next to it. So I, I would assume that the opposite is the pretty flower versus the bleached skull. Um, I would think that that's it. I like the reflection. It's it's a it's a good shot in terms of of a like kind of approaching it like product photography, but that tabula rasa. Um, I like that it's in color. I think it would work really good in black and white, but it, I think it works good in color. And uh, I, my only real criticism I have a slight problem with, and I, I think it's, you know, I, I don't I don't consider it a problem with myself, but I do have a little bit of OCD, ADD going on. And the top of that flower at 11 o'clock being sort of dried out, I would, I would pluck that, pluck that petal or, or turn it in such a way that the, only the, the more perfect petals were up. Of course, this is just my opinion. Um, someone who photographs a skull may may have no 
you know, a little bit of death going on in the flower, uh, that works uh, for them. So, John, what do you think? No, I think it's awesome. Just in general, the, the composition, it took time, yeah. uh, very well composed. The coloring is excellent because you've got that tone in the skull as well. I mean, it was, it was really well thought out. The death and the life of the flower. I, I think it's really nice. Well done. Yeah, well done. And I also, yeah, it's lit really well too, the more I look at it now. And you know what's nice about the, the lighting? Let's point out, there's good detail in the shadows and there really isn't any blown out part. Everything I can see like a, a zone 10 up uh, above the uh, above the fang, maybe a yep. zone nine. We never even hit really zone 10. Yeah, it's just a, yeah, it's good. It's a good shot. It's well, very well done. All right, that was uh, that was Martin Kiernan. Now this is our last uh our last submission, this is Todd Sovine. Let's see what Todd's got. Uh, Patrice and Jane, if you want to take off your microphones and unmute yourselves, this is a this is a group experience here. Um, I I'm going to throw out that when I first saw this photo. And I put it into the presentation and looked at it. I was like, the hell's going on here? What is, what is Todd thinking? And then all of a sudden I saw it and I just smiled and I thought it was so cool because this one, the opposites just revealed themselves. Do you guys spot it? I'm on a couple I... different planes with that. Yeah. So what, what's the, I, I heard Patricia or Jane, I heard you guys start to say something. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's just uh, opposites attract the, these competitors of Pepsi and Cola and Coca-Cola. How how long did it take for you to, to catch Pepsi-Cola versus Coca-Cola? Like, Well, I, I was distracted by the, the, by the broken glass and I was trying to find the relationship between the caps and the glass. And I wasn't really finding that. Yeah. I mean, I suppose you could go, you could really stretch and say metal is less likely to break than glass. So in that sense, they're opposite ends of the spectrum. But I think that's just looking too hard at it. I think it's just as simple as Coke and Pepsi. And I do think the glass is a pretty big distraction to the whole thing. If that's what you're going for, if you're trying to abide by the assignment, I think the glass kind of threw me in a different direction. I, I I agree. Um, I although I I don't I I like the fact that it, it took me a while to figure it out. That was the because I really wrote it off uh, for the first like three four seconds. And any photograph that you can look at for a while is always a uh, is always good. I mean we we're bombarded by images, so when you have to stop and and think and decipher, I think that's cool. It, it's a complexity to to the. Uh, a complexity to the assignment. All right. So we have covered our, what do we have? We had seven and then we're going to do, uh, this is uh, my contribution to this. And no. I, I have my own explanation for it. If anyone wants to, Feel free to say it and and maybe that'll, so I can't bias you with what was going through my head when I made this photo, but I will say that I made this photo with opposites attract in in mind. And I'm, I'm also going to throw out that I, I've got issues. I, I grew up Jewish. I'm pagan. The whole mm -hmm. cross thing, it's very confusing for me. It's been mm -hmm. confusing since my grade school was next to St. John Vianney. So I have to say <laughs> you're seeing a little bit of my psychosis coming out in this, but um, John, once you lead off, what do you what do you think? What's and feel free to rip it apart. I you know this is a crit. I don't think that I'd want to rip it apart. You know, you've got a soldier in the background doing his thing. You've got the crucifix. You've got the crucifixion. You've got jesus which is touting love and peace from what i've been taught more or less uh I, which i'm I'm zen buddhist so it's kind of i can see the opposites 
I can see it in the tone. I can see it in the shape of the characters. You've got a large uh, image of Jesus where it's a smaller soldier. It, it all balances out very well for me. And that's how I see it. But I could be wrong. Well, that you, you nailed it. You got my, my thinking on that. The opposite was a, a warrior versus Christ is the opposite. Yet they attract because she's protecting him. Um, and it's a she. This was in... This was in Mont Saint Michel. Um, so, you know, it, the photograph, I, I'm happy with it because in the back of my head, with all these travels, I was looking for opposites attract. And, you know, I would know it like if a nun is walking by a punker or a fashionista, I, I would know that there were certain things like that. And I had my radar up for it. And just when I was, I was in the zone. I was I was walking around Mont Saint Michel, Nikon twenty four seventy two eight in a, in a Z nine, and uh, I, I I'm not gonna lie. I I found that the soldiers at Mont Saint Michel were like good troops. They had their berets on. They all looked attentive. Eyes were out. They were they were there protecting, and they looked formidable. Um, that's that's just straight up. So, you know, I'm not gonna. I like you said you're Zen Buddhist. I like what you said. You know, with with Christ, this is what we're. This is the standard uh, lexicon for that deity is is the peace and love and and that and that sacrifice. And then she's protecting it. She's obviously a warrior and not an, interested in keeping the peace. But if peace is not an option, I think she's certainly ready. That's the she's holding a nice machine gun point down. And I gotta say, it was a they looked. If anyone was going to start mess, making trouble, I got a feeling that this squad was going to be on it. So, all right. Any other comments on this photograph from Patrice or Jane? Yeah, I've got a couple comments. Um, I I just want to say that I think it might, I think it might have been, I would have liked to have seen the Christ fig figure um, in just as good a focus as the military person because i think you're really trying to draw you're trying to make a statement about these two different beings and so i think it would have been good to just give them an equal presence in do, in doing that by having both subjects in sharp focus and then the only other thing that i would offer is um that whatever that is that piece of metal there it looks like it almost might is a little squawk box or something my eye does keep going to that more than anything you know patricia I, when i was just editing this about an hour ago for the for the presentation i noticed that box and in photoshop because I, I opened it up in camera raw and tweaked it a little bit but in photoshop i i i matched it up and started to select it and then all of a sudden i was like whoa you can't, for me, it felt unethical to remove that box. I hear you. I saw it. It's a little bit of an eyesore. Um, I didn't really see it when I was shooting. I also, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to get in trouble with the security. And sometimes when you're shooting on the street, you could, you could really shoot so much. But when you shoot security, they get very testy about that because the photograph could compromise them in some way. Yeah. Um, so I, I I was afraid of that, and that's why I I think, and I may have, I did one with the Christ in focus and her out of focus. I couldn't get the depth of field to nail them both because I was shooting across a courtyard. Um, so, um, so I could look in my edit and see if I have that. But I appreciate the feedback. Thank you. Um, I certainly, I, I. I you you got me. You got my psychology. I'm I'm more interested in in the warrior Normandy woman than Christ on a cross. Um, mm -hmm. Yet you know it's, I still want to I still want to put Christ on there. I photographed a couple of Christ on a Last Supper. It's it's really if it, my rabbi if I had one would would shake his head. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all right. So um, I want to throw out a hundred percent for a great job everyone who submitted. So that's uh, Larissa Falgarella, uh, Charles and A, George Bowen, John Dolber, Dr. Carr Conor, Martin Kiernan, Todd Sovine. I want to absolutely thank uh, John for for being uh, stepping in with this low, this smaller crowd. I didn't think there'd be a big crowd, but I kind of like the 
the intimacy of it. And Patrice, I really appreciate your feedback as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to ask now, I'm going to turn this over to you guys on this one, and we'll go back. Uh, we can do the best in selection is going to win a $50 donation to the International Photography Council in their name. So it's uh, your efforts uh, and pulling ahead in this will, will allow this to happen. So let's go back and let's start right at the beginning. And this is Larissa Falgarella. So I want you to take a look at that. I'm just going to go through these silently. And then um, I'll just say the name. And then if you like one, uh, you know, write it down or make a note. And then we'll we'll take a survey and see. Well, the, the three of us will judge. If Jane wants to jump in. Jane, you're totally welcome. And here we go. Larissa Felgarella. Charles Lene. George Bowron. John Dolber. Dr. Carl Cohenor. Martin Kiernan. And last but not least, Todd Sovine. All right. So you, we can't vote for ourselves, John. <laughs> so, no worries. <laughs> um, so let's, uh, what does everyone think of our first selection, Larissa Falgarella? Is this anyone's oh. favorite? Uh, I was I was on the phone, unfortunately, for most of it, and so I don't really feel qualified to do any to vote. Okay, Jane, thanks. Um, I I have a little feedback. This is Patrice. Um, Larissa gets my vote. Um, for just so many reasons. Um, I mean, these are so clearly opposites that you wouldn't you wouldn't place together normally just the suggestion of a flame and then these ice cubes in a glass. I think uh, the colors, first of all, are very complementary to each other. I think it's just nicely composed. There's really a, a, a pleasing artistic um, element to this. And um, I just like the subtleness of it, but it's also blatant at the same time. You know, fire and ice, they're as opposite as you think, but it's just done in a really it's a really pleasant image to look at, and I think it fulfills um, the assignment beautifully. You know, John and I, uh, John, that mirrors what you said about the image as well. The color, um, yes. Yep, the color and composition, and it's... Uh... Okay, um, I'm just going to... John, if you, have a, if you have a favorite of the group? Uh, believe it or not, Charles. Charles LeBay with the uh, New York, with the, the the people, both directions. His composition, it's nice as far as it is to opposing traffic patterns crossing, but then you have humanity and then you have the commercialism on the top of it too. Real people, but commercialism, which isn't really part of, I'm not sure I can explain it as well. I, Think you can understand what I'm saying? There, totally. There's a there's a lot of opposites that are attracting, and the fact that it's even in black and white, his tone is spot on. Mm -hmm. So agreed. Yeah, it's 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 good. It, it really is. All right. Um, so this is this is the one. That's the one that I gave my um, second place vote to. Okay. Um, and it, it's interesting. There's just so much happening here. Um, and normally, you know, when we're looking at a photo, we, we really want our, if it's well composed, you think about your eye really be being directed around the frame in the way the photographer attend, intended. 
Um, I, I, I really am enjoying the counter movements that are happening here. The people in the foreground are captivating enough that they hold me in the direction they're going. And then from there, I, I back up to the next level, with, which is all the people standing at that higher elevation. And they are looking in different directions, but there really is more of a feedback. I mean, um, a feeling of that they're moving in the opposite direction of these people in the foreground. And then I think that the signage up above really beautifully complements what the people are doing. And also just the immensity of what goes on in a city. I'm so held by that. There's all this signage that's happening and all the life that is happening in this one uh, image here. Really, it, it holds me. It, it holds me rather than distracts me away because there's too much happening, which is off, can often be the case with so, no uh, real focal point. If you had to choose, to, did you spot Henry Kissinger down on the bottom right? <laughs> I didn't spot Henry. <laughs> Henry down there. Would you would you give would you choose Larissa's over this over Charles's? What would you say embodies the two? Oops. Well, I I mean just for me personally, I would choose Larissa's, but um, but but I really think the black and white is really is really a nice shot as well. I really do. And I and I think these these two for me more than anything really really embrace the the assignment. No, I agree. Okay, you know what I, I I'm going to be a tiebreaker on this one, and I was going to say uh, Todd Sovines, just because it it messed with me, and it actually my wife took a quick look at the at the at the results, and she was like that, that she just dismissed it immediately and walked okay. away. From and and she actually set the it was her idea for the assignment, but then like I said later on, I, you know, a couple maybe ten seconds later, I, I realized what the like why that was I had to figure it out. So I like that, but I really appreciate you guys coming, staying with it. So I want to go back to these, and I'm just going to throw the tiebreaker out. I'm going to give it to Charles Lene. Um, I'm a New Yorker. He captures it. It's if the photo. You know what? What you gave a critique to me, Pratis, you said that that you would have liked to have seen the Christ figure and the and the girl in focus uh, together. Instead, we've got one shallow focus and one in focus. Taking that note, this is what a photograph looks like for what you're suggesting, because we've got foreground in focus, midground in focus. It just starts to fall a little bit off in the background, but that only brings the midground and the foreground right up to you. So I, I I'm I'm all about it. It's a so Charles Lene has won the selection of the evening, and he will be getting a fifty dollar uh, contribution donation in his name to IPC on the next email. His photograph will be featured with confirmation of that. So the other moral to the story is is that. With what suspect photography is trying to do, we're trying to do good because any donation to International Photography Council, it's peace through photography, is a good thing. So uh, that concludes this assignment.